welcome again to my live. Oh my goodness, you guys came so promptly. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's so nice to see you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, I'll read those very soon. Can you hear me? Is that okay, the sound? I can adjust a little bit. Okay, how does that sound? Please comment and let me know how that sounds to you. Um, because I want us all to be able to hear. <laughs> if we can all hear, then it'll be a better world. Better. Okay, good. Good. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Okay. I need my phone for this. Okay. So, um, thank you guys for coming again to my channel. And before we get really into, into it, you know, I'm dressing like a fashion icon today. You feel me? You feel me? Feel inspired from this video. Um, but before we get really started, I want to make a couple announcements about things that are happening uh, currently and things that will happen very soon. So, um, yes. Thank you. I'm a troll. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I love wearing scarves on my neck and scarves on my head. Um, but yes, uh, first to the announcements. So the first announcement is the Patreon. So I'm not sure if you guys know, but I do have a Patreon page where you can donate so that I can create more giveaways and uh, more things like the Geisha gift boxes and different kinds of fun events that do, you know, cost some cash. So if you are down for the cause, then please go to my Patreon page, which I will link below after this video is done so that you can help um, be a supporter. And I would really appreciate that. And I do really appreciate uh, those who help. So thank you. And second thing, okay, the second thing is that the lip, uh, not the lip sync, the J intro giveaway is in full swing. So if you are interested in entering, please email me at chocolateumai95 at gmail.com with your intro and the winner will get some goodies. And yes, I have been shopping recently. So you guys will get some nice goodies in the mail if you do win, but it's still very open. So please um, apply and you might just have a chance at uh, hitting the lottery. So there's that. And the last thing before we get started is the Geisha gift boxes. So there are Geisha gift boxes available for purchase. They are personalized boxes. Um, with three options. So you can choose the kawaii box, the cute box, the culture box, or the customized box um, where you can basically request anything. And these are goodies and things that I find here in Japan and there's no like factory or anything like that. I pick them on myself, I buy them on myself, and I arrange them all myself according to what you told me that you like. And I'll be sending those out very, very soon, but the it is still open. And the deadline is the same as the J intro giveaway. So the 27th at 11.59 p.m. J, uh, PST, Pacific Standard Time, is the deadline. Um, so, yes, if you're interested, then please also shoot me an email, chocolateumai95 at gmail.com, and I will make sure that I get those to you guys. But, yeah, I think that might be everything. Um, yes, I do have, like, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, and Zelle for Wells Fargo. So if you guys have, I'm really flexible with the payment. So if you guys are interested, just shoot me an email and I'll give you an estimate depending on where you are and how expensive the shipping is. But yeah, that's basically everything. Um, <laughs> I know there's like a ton of announcements, a ton, like way too many announcements, but thank you guys for bearing with me. And now we can get into the good stuff. But first, I want to say hello again. Um, you guys, it has been hectic. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be going back to the States very soon. So I've just been in a preparatory period. And I'm literally surrounded with luggage around me. Um, so yes, get those orders in soon. Um, but um, yeah, it's just been me here, you know. I'm doing the damn thing or whatever. So I'm going to read some of these comments and then we'll get started on today's topic. How far can I go? How far can I go? Oh, send me a radio. 1999 says, how was your day? My day's been good. My day's been good. You know, um, just packing, honestly, this morning. There's been a lot of packing going on. But thank you. Um, let's see. 
<laughs> Little Windex says, heck yeah, heck yeah. And um, Nafsa says, Frazier says, good and yours. It's been good. It's been good. My day's been really good. Let's see. Samia, uh, Samia Radio 1999 says, I never got to talk to you. Um, you have so many people on here. I know. There's more people than um, I really ever thought would care about this channel. Um, but I'm really happy that you guys are interested in learning about Japan and learning about just foreign cultures in general and how to live a happy, healthy life abroad. So thank you very much for all of you who tune in. Let's see. Okay. I will get into some of these later, but greetings to all of you. And let's get started on today's topic, which is Japanese fashion trends. Okay, you guys, here in Japan, fashion is very different from, from abroad, from the U.S. Uh, many of you guys know that I'm American, born and raised California girl, and things are very different here fashion-wise. Um, it took a while for me to adapt, and I will explain why in this video. Um, so, first things first, Things here in Japan tend to be very androgynous. And if you know androgynous, that is basically in between male and female. It's not particularly masculine. It's not particularly feminine. It's some kind of gray area in between. So you'll see a lot of women who wear very long flowy pants and men who wear the same kind of thing. People don't really show a lot of their curves. Um, here they wear like very big clothes <laughs> and Honestly, if some people aren't wearing makeup, it's very, it can be challenging to tell like who's a woman and who's a man because people love that androgynous look. That is very much a look here. It's a look. Okay. It's a look. Um, good afternoon. Welcome Oliver. Um, but yeah, that tends to be a thing here in Japan. And that is, um, one of the big things I've noticed. Uh, mind you, there are a lot of different kinds of fashion. People have Lolita, there's Gothic fashion, there's like Western street fashion. There's so many different kinds of um, of tastes as far as clothing goes. Um, but I feel like the vast majority, if you were to ride a train at any given time of day and to look at the people riding the train, most of them are dressing androgynously. So yeah, it tends to be very androgynous, very much so. Um, yeah, so we'll continue to number two. Number two is that Japan and the fashion here, the fashion sense here is very conservative, very conservative. Um, you don't see a lot of people dressing like sexy or like slain, like slay the way that we say here. Um, people don't dress like that here very often. People dress more conservatively, like I mentioned in my do's and don'ts video about Japan. Uh, people don't show a lot of their chest. They cover up literally to the collarbone. People cover up and don't show. Basically, this is kind of the norm here. I'm a little scandalous today. But um, the norm is that people don't show their chest, but they will show their legs. And it's really interesting because, you know, the seasons are changing. Um, we're getting into fall and fall is going to transition into winter. So there's a lot of rain and a lot of cold weather coming our way here in Japan. And people still wear really short shorts. And people still wear really short skirts. And I'm just like, how? Like, how are you not freezing right now? But people, that is the norm. Like, people don't really mind whatever season it may be. People love wearing short skirts and short, just short bottoms in general. And that is so different from the U.S. Because I think that most people in the U.S., cover their legs most of the time right like with leggings or like sundresses if it's sundress season um but yeah here in Japan year-round people will wear short things and that was really surprising for me um because I am American so yeah that took some getting used to as well and I don't usually show my legs um I like more like the form-fitting fashion those of you who follow me on Instagram chocolate underscore geisha on Instagram those of you who follow me know that like I love like tight clothing but clothing that doesn't show a ton of skin so it was very different for me coming here yes Jacqueline shorts year-round I am I wish I was kidding but people wear shorts all the time all the time men and women both 
they were shorts. Um, so yeah, that's another fashion statement that I have witnessed <laughs> here in Japan. Um, but yes, I'm going to read a little bit more of these comments and then we will get into um, number three. Let me see. Sorry, I feel like I've been talking so much. There's so many here. Oh, there's so many. Aw, Queen Ariadne says, yay, can't wait for this to start. Thank you. Um, Cinda Taco says, I can hear you fine. Perfect. Oh, Prime and Carta says, hi. Hey, Geisha. Hey. <laughs> Lumen Dex says, it's good. Good. Let's see. I sound fine. Um, yeah, Nia, Mo Nia Moses says, Hey girl, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing real good. It's really rainy right now. So I wanted to go out um, and meet a friend, meet a new friend out in the city. But um, I don't know how that's going to work out now that it's kind of rainy. It's kind of rainy right now. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but the day is good. Thank you. How much are the boxes? Um, good question. So the cost of the box mainly depends on the shipping to where you are. Um, the boxes themselves aren't like too, too expensive because I am here in Japan. You can get a lot of cultural things for really like reasonable prices, but the shipping itself can be a little pricey. So um, it really just depends on where you are. Um, yeah, so I hope that answers your question. Let's see. Golden Oliver says, I love your videos. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and it's okay if you're late. You can pop in and out if you want. There's no obligation to stay the whole time. I won't be offended, I promise, if you end up leaving a little early. Um, it's fine. It's just YouTube. Um, <laughs> D. Nogitsune says, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, and yes, everything is going good. I really do wish it was um, like nicer weather. I love blue skies. I'm a sucker for a blue sky. Um, and it's been cloudy for like literally weeks. Like I wish I was joking, but the weather is not really how I prefer, but can't control the weather. Let's see. Hutch Black says, you're very pleasant when you speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am college educated, so I would hope, <laughs> I would hope that I speak well, <laughs> that I'm well-spoken and eloquent, um, but thank you very much. Thank you. I also like to think that my parents raised me right, so thank you. <laughs> um, Lil Index says, what do people think of tattoos in Japan? Hmm, times are changing. Times are changing. Um, originally, people didn't really care. However, in Japan, there is a very popular gang called the Yakuza, I'm sure you've heard, um, the Yakuza, and they categorize themselves by wearing very elaborate tattoos on their backs and on their arms. But nowadays, because a lot more people are getting tattooed and there are a lot of foreigners coming who already have tattoos, people are starting to care a lot less, like so much less, like so much less. So um, people still care to an extent, but not enough that you would it would impede on your enjoyment here in Japan. So I'd say this is a good time to have a tattoo in Japan, like more than really ever before. So I'd say you're good. And I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Golden Oliver says, I am Muslim, so I ain't showing anything. I feel that. I feel that. Um Actually, surprisingly, there are a lot of people from Persia here, like more than I expected. And um, yeah, it's totally cool to wear like a hijab. Like people, obviously people, oh, I'm speaking a little too soon. I'll get there with like head wraps because I also wrap my hair from time to time. Um, I'll save that a little later. So if you want to stick around, I will definitely touch on that because um, I personally am not Muslim. But I do wrap my hair because I don't always want to show my hair like every day, you know, like it's not a daily thing. Um, so, yeah, I will definitely get to that. All right. Um, I definitely want to read more of these. I'm seeing them right now, but I will read more of these after I do a little bit more of today's topic, which is the Japanese fashion trend. Right. So I will get to that. All right. So we left off at number two. So here's number three. Number three is that people definitely prefer loose over tight. 
And um, that is a contrast that I've seen compared to the U.S. Because, like me, a lot of people in the West wear very tight clothing, like, um, like leggings or like tight dresses from like Fashion Nova or like some kind of related company. But here in Japan, people love loose, flowy clothes. Um, and that is also year-round. So people don't really like showing their curves, um, which can also make it a little difficult to tell um, masculine versus feminine because um, one of the major things that defines the sexes is the shape of our bodies. Um, and if you cover everything, obviously it's going to be a little difficult to tell who's a man and who's a woman. But um, here in Japan, yeah, people definitely prefer that more conservative route. People like dressing very loose, um, loose clothing-wise. And they don't show <laughs> a lot of um, a lot of skin or a lot of their body shape. So that is something that I've noticed as well. Ooh, and number four. Number four is that people wear heels. People wear heels on like every occasion. Every occasion. And I am not kidding. People love wearing heel high heeled shoes. And yes, the women love wearing high heeled shoes. Um, when I was back in Gunma Prefecture, which is definitely more country than Tokyo. People wore high heel shoes to the convenience store, to the supermarket, to the mall, to any kind of event. Obviously, to like clubs and bars and things like that. But people wore heels a lot more than I've ever seen anyone wear heels in the States. And here in Tokyo, there's definitely always at least one girl, at least one girl who's wearing high heeled shoes in the car of the train. Um, most of the time, there's at least like four of them. Um, <laughs> and one of them is me, <laughs> but, um, I've definitely gained the courage to wear some of my high heel shoes because I did bring quite a few, um, because I already knew that that was a thing here, that people love wearing high heel shoes. Um, but yeah, um, that's okay, Jacqueline, feel free, do as you'd like. Um, but yeah, like high heel shoes is definitely a thing here as well. Um, a little surprising, but I got used to it. Let's see. Um, and I see Jets Hadonatari. Oh, yes, Natalie. Hello. I just got your email. Hey. Um, yes, if I were a size 8 shoe, do you think that it would be hard to find shoes in Japan? And I do not think it's hard because you and I share the same size shoe. Yes, I am a size 8 um, most times. Sometimes 8.5, sometimes 9 if it's like a tennis shoe and I need to wear like really like bulky socks sometimes. Um, but yes, usually a size 8, and with size 8, I haven't found that much difficulty. I think that in Japan, size 8 or 9, you'll be alright. But if you have any size bigger, then you might struggle a little bit. And it might be better for you to bring your own shoes, just so that you don't have to, um, you, you won't get too disappointed if you don't find um, the shoes in the style that you like. All right, so I am going to read a little bit more of these comments and then we'll continue to number five and six. All right, so let me read a little more. Um, Amanda says, is it cold over there yet? It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold right now. Um, and I'm feeling like I'm, I'm catching a cold, like a little bit, because I'm like feeling like really like snotty and just gross in general. Um, so I'm trying to stay, stay healthy. But yes, it's definitely getting cold. The seasons are changing here. And honestly, every time a season changes, it feels like it rains. Like it rains every time there's a season change. So yeah, it's definitely cold here. Let's see. Dino Gitsune says, I applied to Jet Program. And it's time now to wait seven weeks of work left than vacation. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Good luck. Good luck on your Jet Program video. Hopefully, um, your Jet Program, hopefully you saw the video um, that I posted about the advice for applying. Um, but, yes, I'm, I'm sure you'll do well. I'm sure you will. And best of luck to you. Okay. Um, let's continue on. <laughs> um, Dino Gitsune says, show off the legs if you got them. They probably worked hard for them. Oh, yeah. Japanese people definitely. Diet culture here in Japan is stronger than I've literally ever seen it anywhere else in my whole life. Like, people 
diet to look like slim and snatched like that is the name of the game and people people deliver here they definitely like that really lean look really lean like like almost unhealthy um but we won't get into that is a whole nother video but i'll leave that um <laughs> for later uh jacqueline says shorts year round yes shorts all year all year um that is one trend i personally can't really get with because if I do wear shorts, I need to wear leggings underneath. Like, I cannot just wear shorts. That's too much skin. I'm going to get sick. And I already have a weak immune system. I can't be playing these these little games in this weather. You feel me? Like, I can't be playing these games. Um, oh, gold with all of us. Is, oh, I really love, I really, really love cold weather. I do too. Honestly, I prefer the cold to the heat. However, um... I just don't want to get sick, you feel me? Because if you get sick, then that impedes on, like, your work life, your home life, your personal, like, how often you can go out with friends. Like, it's just, it all just, it's all related. So, if you have good wealth, then uh, good health, health is wealth. So, if you have good health, then that definitely will be reflected in the rest of the arenas of life, I believe, anyway. Let's see. Oh, Nucky Tuna, you're in Korea. Ooh, that's bomb. Oh, that's one regret that I have is that I didn't travel to Korea in my time here. Oh, I really wanted to go to Korea. I really did. I really did. Um, and it's not too late, of course. It's not too late, but definitely want to travel to Korea sometime soon. Okay, so I'm going to read number five and six on my little list that I made. Okay. So number five is masks. There is definitely a mask culture. And I'm not sure if you guys know, but in Japan, when you're feeling a little ill or under the weather, like today, you wear a mask that usually covers over your nose and mouth. And there are little straps that go around your ears and you can wear that. Um, and it just keeps you from... I'm spreading whatever disease you have. So you can cough into it. You can like sneeze into it. You can like blow snot bubbles into it. <laughs> and no one's going to care. Um, but there's also, um, it's also a fashion statement. It really is also a fashion statement in the sense that people sell masks in like different colors, like black, white, pink, blue, yellow, any color you can imagine. Some people draw like cute little faces on that. Um, cute little faces on the masks, like, like a bear mouth or like, like cute little like emoji type mouth, uh, drawings on their masks. And there are, it's a statement, it's a statement piece. Um, <laughs> it, I use it as a hack for whenever I don't do my makeup and I don't want to like bother. I just put a mask on and people are like, oh my God, it's a guy jean, but we can't see her lips. Oh my God. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's definitely a statement piece. And, um, nowadays it's becoming a lot more popular to wear in, um, as a, as an accessory, like on your clothing. So if you have a black mask and you're wearing like a black shirt, like for example, with this outfit, right? I'm sure you guys can see with this outfit, I might wear a red mask or a gold colored mask, maybe a purple mask to bring out the purple or a blue mask. Like, People dress like that here. Um, they definitely coordinate their styles. And yeah, that's not a rarity here. So yeah, um, mask culture is definitely a thing. And um, there's this one black Instagrammer who's here in Tokyo. And her name is um, Ebony. And I like, I've never like contacted her. But like, I think she's so cute. And I just like look at her videos all the time. Um, and she wears a lot of masks too. So um, yeah, it's definitely a thing. Natives and foreigners definitely like that whole mask thing. So, yeah. I wonder if there's, like, a Ankara print mask. You guys know Ankara, right? Like, the African print? That could be really cool. Maybe, but... Anyway. Um, <laughs> let's continue. Ooh, yes. And number six is high socks. High socks. People here love high socks. Um, they're definitely, um, very, uh, very uh, characteristically, like, high school. Like, a lot of really young girls wear high socks, like, thigh socks up to the 
the lower thigh. Um, that's very common, but also in fashion, there are a lot of women who like to wear thigh socks or high socks um, in different colors. They, most of the time, they tend to be black or white, but sometimes they have stripes. Um, I personally, I like wearing thigh socks, and even back in high school, I loved wearing high socks. Oh, I loved wearing high socks. Um, but because, you know, I got these thick thighs, sometimes my thighs do not agree with the thigh socks. <laughs> I try. I definitely try. Um, but yeah, thigh socks is definitely a thing here as well. All right. So now I'm going to read a little bit more of these comments and then we can continue. So let me get into this. So I have to scroll up every time. Okay, Jeffrey Sherman says, I don't know how to write your name in Kana, but I tried extremely limited Nihongo. Hello, Chocolate Geisha. Hello, Jeffrey. Welcome to my live. I hope that you're enjoying things so far. Um, Dino Gitsune says, it's blue skies here. We can switch. It's only a half an hour flight. I know it's so close, which makes me like even more like frustrated that I wasn't able to travel there. Um, but still on my list. Still trying to come to, um, to Busan if I can in the future. Let's see. Golden Oliver says, are you going to get smacked if you drop your small head to towel in an onsen? No, you won't. You won't. I promise. Because this happened to me and I didn't get smacked. <laughs> I'm saying this from experience. Um, with the head towels, those of you who know, um, the onsen is a public bath. It's a hot spring that you go into totally nude. However, you can bring a towel to cover yourself as you go from hot spring to hot spring. And usually, because you can't put anything, not even your hair, in the water, you can put your little towel on your head. And yes, it's considered unsanitary if your hair or the towel gets in the water. But I promise that they will not smack you if it accidentally happens. Um, so don't worry. <laughs> you're good. You're good. I promise. I promise. No worries. Um, all right. Let's continue. Let me see. Let me see. Okay, so Dino Kitsune says, I wrap my hair because I don't want random people touching my hair. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I feel that on a spiritual level. Because, like, whenever I wear, like, my curly hair or, like, curly extensions out, like, in public, I haven't had anyone overtly reach for my hair. Um, But when I worked in Gunma Prefecture, I had... The principal of my school, like literally the principal, like reached into my hair and she grabbed it. And I was like, no, in slow motion. I was like, don't touch. Oh my God. Like for people who love their personal space, like that was very ballsy of you, if I do say so myself. Um, but here in Tokyo, not so much. I think it's also because here in Tokyo, there's a lot of um, <laughs> uh, people are very close in general and I think that people don't really like that part of living here I don't anyway I'm not sure if you guys follow me on Instagram chocolate underscore geisha at Instagram um but like I'll show you guys like how crowded it is on the train sometimes and yeah most people don't really care that much about you <laughs> they just don't want to be close to anyone and I share that sentiment fully like I hate being too close I hate when people touch me in general like like, not even necessarily, like, touch, but just, like, mindless touching. Like, if you, like, you know, hold my shoulder, if you're, like, laughing, ha, 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 like, that's okay. But, like, don't just, like, touch me, like, mindlessly. That's, that's not cool. And I don't like that. Nippon food. Ah, oh, there's a food truck outside. Okay, sorry. Getting distracted. Let's see. Do, do, do. Yes, Nogitsune, please show me. Show me around. <laughs> I, will, I still want to go to Korea. I really I really do. It's it's still on my list. Um, Cindy Ozaka says, we need more thigh highs in America. I haven't seen any. I know. I know. In America, there's not that many thigh high socks. And a lot of the ones that I got were from San Francisco, where there is a higher Asian population compared to my hometown, which is on the outskirts of San Francisco. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's pretty rare. Um yeah anyway if you guys are interested in the geisha gift box i can literally send you a box of just socks if that's what you want i don't, I don't mind i don't mind as long as you got the cash i can i can pass it to you i promise <laughs> i promise i got the connect i can do it for you 
Um, hmm. well, I love high socks too. Okay, let's continue on. Let's continue on. So number seven, was it? Number seven is that women particularly love to dress cute. Love to dress cute. And I went over this a little bit in my Japanese beauty standards video that people here love to dress very kawaii for really any occasion. And people go out of their way to dress extra cute to things. So if there are a lot of specialty stores that you can go to that have clothes that are just specifically for like people who want to indulge in that kawaii culture. Um, oh, I forgot the name, I forgot the name. But there are, there's a store, like a very popular store that sells clothes with like a lot of frills and a lot of like puffy like underskirts and like, what are they called, petticoats and like it's just a very cute. Like there's a lot of stores like that. I know that store particularly because I purchased it before, <laughs> but there are a lot of stores like that that sell very cutesy clothing. Um, and there are a lot of people here who dress cutesy as well. Um, even yesterday, I was coming home um, from uh, from work, basically. I, I came home from work. And there was this girl who was dressed in, like, this black and purple Lolita dress just on the train. Um, but I see, like, at least one, like, a day, I'd say. Um, and it's, it's very common um, compared to the U.S. where, like, you might see one every blue moon. So people are definitely into the kawaii culture here and they love dressing cute, like, like cute. And a lot of it does tend to be like very Victorian um, in the sense that there are a lot of, there's a lot of lace and, and just, it's very fluffy in, in certain areas, like maybe like a poofed shoulder or like a petticoat, like I mentioned, where your, where your dress is not um, to your body, but it's, it's certain layers off your body to give that like very girly effect. Um, that's also very much so a thing here as well. But yeah, that's what I've noticed. And number eight, <laughs> number eight is, um, so let me like lead this in by saying that in Japan, there are a lot of people who enjoy that cutesy style. However, there are a lot of people who like very Western style, Western fashion. Um, even yesterday, there was a girl at my job who came and she said that her favorite artist is Ty Dolla Sign. I'm like, how do you know Ty Dolla Sign? What do you know about that? And she can't even speak English, but she enjoys his music. And I say that to say that there are definitely people here who love like that Western culture, who love hip hop, who love rap, who love all of those different things. Um, so their fashion does reflect that. So there are people who like going to um, cer certain like streetwear stores. Uh, where they can buy um, things like that and I found that on a lot of their clothing there tends to be like very like nonsensical English like very rubbish English very um, how should I say very improper English you could say like not full sentences no periods no commas no apostrophes no like subject verb noun like none of that like it's it's very weird and I wish I could give you guys an example let me see like like spring is a season of all seasons or like something like I'm just like that doesn't even make any sense <laughs> but like it's something that I've seen here on multiple occasions and people who like western culture like because a lot of people can read English um like there's a lot of written English on people's shirts and things but it's just weird when you read it. And just like, this doesn't, do you, do you know what this says? Um, when I was living in Guma last year, um, some of my female students who would shop at a store called Love Toxic, which is kind of like a Western themed store, um, with definitely cutesy accents, but it's definitely a Western themed store. They'd come into class and they'd have like these shirts and I'm like, do you know what this shirt says? And they're like, no, sensei, I don't. Can you read it for me? And I'd read it and they're like, what does it mean? And I'm like, I literally can't even translate this for you because this, like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, it does not make any, it does not make any sense. Um, so yeah, that is also a thing. <laughs> that is also a thing here. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that's something I've noticed too. Um, yeah, anyway, that was number seven and eight. So there's only one more, but before we get to the last one, I'm going to read some more of these comments. And then we can continue. How about that? So let me see, scrolling up. Do, do, do. 
Jeffrey Sherman says, your thighs don't agree with thigh highs. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, because honestly, I have been thicker than a snicker since puberty. Um, and <laughs> it has always been a thing with anything around my thighs. So even dresses, like I'll have a dress that fits like really nice because I have like a, like a smaller top and then like the bottom is just like an L. So yeah, take that L. Anyway, let me continue. Do, do, do. Cindy Afaku says, what about hair down under? Do you have to shave before going to an onsen? Nope, you do not. People there, okay. Um, 18 and up. <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys care, but like people in Japan don't really like shave their pubes, like their pubic hair very often. Um, so like people go in there like with full bushes and it's totally normal. Like people... There's not like a super like sexualized idea of the body like a like like kind of how there is in the states or in the western world like people just kind of come as they are. So you'll see people with hairy legs, you'll see people with like hairy pubes and like armpit hair and like people don't care. Like people really don't care. Um and I find I find that really nice like going in there because when I first came to Japan I was super worried that people would look at me and think that I was some like some kind of weird alien that people wouldn't be able to they'd feel uncomfortable and people would literally get out of the water um but coming to japan and going to an onsen like it has been like such a breath of fresh air and one of my favorite places to go in japan is to any onsen honestly because you can just be yourself and women are surrounded around women and you've got nothing to hide because you literally have nothing to hide and that's something that I'm never, I'm really going to miss about Japan is the onsen because, you know, in, in the United States, we can't act right. We can't have nice things and we can't, we can't handle onsen culture in the States. But here in Japan, like it has been so wonderful. And I know it's super nerve wracking because obviously in the West, we don't have anything like this at all, but I highly recommend coming to an onsen. Like, if anything, if anything, like, you don't have to try, like, weird sushi. You don't have to try natto. You don't have to go anywhere you don't want to go. But I say if you come to Japan, please, like, please go to an onsen because you are going to come out there a better person, a better person. So go to an onsen. Okay. So I want to continue reading some of these, and then we will get into it again with the last note that I have written um yeah let's see Franny doll 831 says is there a target in Japan no there isn't surprisingly I thought there would be some kind of like um American type store here but there's no Walmart no Target no Albertsons no Rayleigh's no nothing no Publix <laughs> it's all just Japanese versions and um, you can find certain products that you would buy in a Target here in like a, in an Inageya or a general supermarket. Um, but no, they don't have the Japanese, uh, they don't have the American supermarkets here, unfortunately. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Dean Nogitsune says, I have locks and my first reaction is a is punch a person in the throat unless they are a child they ask me politely first yeah oh believe me um my mom the first time i came to japan i came with my mom and at the time she had sister locks so she had her hair locked and there was actually a lady who came up to us and she asked my mom if she could touch my mom's dreads and so my mom let her and she was like so entranced she was just she was like, it's like she had seen, seen God. She was like, oh my God, foaming at the mouth. <laughs> Not like that, but <laughs> she was really surprised. So, um, I think it's okay if people ask because most of the time people don't have hair like that here, but it's it, like, I think you understand when I say that it's like a totally different thing if someone just like goes in for it and treats you like you're an animal and that you don't, you don't deserve respect or at least like consent before someone tries to touch you in a very intimate way and your hair our hair is not like other ethnicities hair our hair is very much so entwined with our identity so if you like <laughs> if you impede on our hair you're impeding on our identity and that is not okay in any culture in any language in any country 
So yeah, I totally agree with you. But yeah, if someone wants to touch your hair and asks first, like I don't mind if someone wants to touch my hair because people don't, this kind of hair doesn't grow out of someone's head, but you cannot come up on me and try and reach into my, like, excuse you, like, excuse you. <laughs> like, but that hasn't happened to me except for the principal situation, right? Um, but yeah, most of the time, people are respectful, I find. People tend to be respectful. So that's a good thing. Anyway, enough for this rant. I should continue to the last one. The last one. Um, <laughs> let's see. So number nine, which is the last note that I have, is the sizes. So here in Japan, like I mentioned in other videos multiple times over and over, is that the sizes here in Japan tend to be very small because people here tend to be very small. <laughs> so um, people tend to have not just a short stature in terms of height, but like small rib cages and like very, very small hips. People don't really have a lot of butt here in Japan and I have got butt four days. So I've had some difficulties myself. But a lot of the sizes tend to be small. So if you are, for example, if you shop at Forever 21 and you tend to be a medium, you'll probably you'll probably be a large. And I think that the largest size that they tend to sell here is an LL, which is an extra large, which would be a USA sized large. Um, but if you are like significantly plus sized, um, significantly like, uh, I don't know, if, like if you have a bigger frame, I guess you could say then you might have some trouble. But yes, as, in terms of fashion, I've seen a lot more people who are freakishly small than freakishly large, you could say. Um, and that's something to keep in mind. If you plan to come here and want to buy a lot of clothing, you should be careful because people here are tiny. And um, I've definitely had clothes where um, <laughs> if I have a week where I just like go crazy, um, I might start feeling a little tight, like in the hip area, because it all goes down to the hips for storage. Um, <laughs> and sometimes it'll be a little difficult to fit certain things. So, and I consider myself like average, like an average American person. Um, so you might experience a little bit of difficulty, but I think, yeah, if you are like very petite in the U.S., you will thoroughly enjoy your time here because they have your size and they have it in abundance. Um, I saw a comment earlier on shoes, um, and like I mentioned in a, a previous video, I don't even remember which one because I'm sure I've said it many times before, but the standard size tends to be around a USA sized 7. So if you have a 7 size shoe, you will have the best time here because you are considered like an M, like the average. Um, if you are an 8 or a 9, you are considered an L and an LL. So you may have a bit more difficulty also depending on the shape of your foot as well because um, Japanese feet I find tend to be very straight and long like kind of like a deer hoof like very <laughs> straight and long but if you are like me I have what I call duck feet or bear paws but I have very round feet um, you might have a little more trouble but I'm still able to buy shoes here like some of my favorite shoes hold on a second I'll show you. Here's one of them. I have this like pointy, sorry, it's a thing here, but it's like a pointed toed shoe and it's like a flat, like with a little bit of a heel because you know, they love their heels. Um, and this one is a little more rounded so I can fit all of my little piggies inside. And yeah, it fits really comfortably. Like I can wear this for like literally an eight hour day and not have any problems. And this thing was like $10, like no lie. It was really cheap. So yeah, the prices are very reasonable as well. Hold on. And yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I can read a couple more of these comments. I'm going to be ending this live in like 15 minutes. So you guys feel free to rapid fire send me whatever questions you may have. And that can be about this topic or about the giveaway or about my Patreon or about the Geisha gift boxes, anything. Um, I'll be here for another 15 minutes. I'm planning to end this right at one hour. So yeah, feel free. Feel free. As you like. Or as they say... As you wish. You guys watch Princess Bride? I read the book. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to read more of these comments and then I'll um, reply to them little by little. I can't even pee. Yikes. 
Um, it's okay. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. Okay. Let's see. Do, do, do. A golden Oliver says, is it hard to find fabrics and art supplies in Japan? No, I don't find, th I don't think so. Um, in Japan, because there are a lot more people who do like kind of like DIY things as far as like clothing goes. And people tend to be a lot more fashionably like adventurous here in Japan. No, you won't have, I, I don't think they'll have any issues. And yeah, I think they'll be fine. Um, let me continue. <laughs> Stina Lynn says, yes, yeah, socks socks indeed and there's so many places to buy high socks here so if you guys really want some chocolate umai 95 at gmail.com is my email and if you want a geisha gift box i will send one to you i will do it and i am willing to take as many as i can i have suitcases all around me right now but um i still got space so if you guys want some stuff i will definitely get you what you want okay let's continue Let's continue a little bit. So, do all ages prefer a cute style, says Natalie. Um, I would say, yeah. I would say, yeah. There's definitely a bit of a... Uh, I have a controversial opinion about some Japanese women, and I think that people have, like, a Peter Pan syndrome in the sense that they don't want to grow up. And they a lot of people who are, like, literally double my age will dress half my age. And that is very shocking for me because... In America, you know, people, like, dress for the occasion and people don't feel the need to constantly sip at a fountain of youth that doesn't exist. And people just embrace their age and age gracefully in the States. But here in Japan, people just don't want to, a lot of women don't want to dress their age. Um, and you can see that sometimes in the way that they speak. And I don't mean to get too controversial. That is kind of an, I don't know if it's an unpopular opinion or not, but that is how I feel, and that's what I've noticed being here. So if you see a woman who's wearing a lot of pink and she wears a very fluffy pink dress and she's got a nice white bag and she's got like a bow tie on her head, she very well may, may be like in her 50s. Like you don't know. Um, but yeah, that's something that is not as rare as I expected it to be. So yeah. Let me continue. Let me see. Do, do, do. I'm not sure where I stopped last time. Okay, here we go. So, no, uh, D. Nogitsune says, I'll get it when I get to Japan cheaper shipping. Oh, yeah. Honestly, if you're planning on coming to Japan, I'd say just wait because um, things in Japan don't tend to be super duper expensive, but shipping it is. <laughs> Unless you're also in Asia, like, like in Korea, for example. But if you're in the States... Um, I will definitely get that for you. But if you plan on coming to Japan sometime soon, just just wait. And I promise it'll it'll be even better that you waited for it, you know? Like absence makes the heart grow fonder. Like you'll you'll want it more. But if you don't have any like definitive plans to come here in the future, then I'll give you the hookup. I'm the plug. I got the plug. I got the plug. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Um Natalie says, Where are you working now? I currently work at an Eikaiwa, um, which is like a Japanese language school. Um, I'll be honest, I don't really like it, <laughs> but um, that'll all change very soon, and I will leave it there. Um, Dino Gitsuna says, I see plenty of that here. And Golden Oliver says, do you think that uh, their long lily to dresses to reach up to your ankles or your wrists? Um, yes. Uh, now, since it's getting colder, um, there are a lot more that are that conservative in the sense that they go all the way down or all the way to your wrists. Um, but I'd say it's more common to find one that goes to your wrist than one that goes all the way down because they still like short skirts. So um, you might see everything conservative except for the legs. And that's a, that's a, that's a thing. That's it's a look here. Um, people really do go for that look. Let's see. What's the temperature is where I saw. But I'll, I promise I'll get to that. It's. It's cold. I want to say, I only really know Fahrenheit because I'm American and we like to do things different in Marca. But I want to say it's like 60 degrees right now. Fahrenheit. Um, okay, went too far up. My goodness. Um, let's see. Uh, Golden Oliver says, is it a myth that Tokyo is really crowded but overall great videos? Thank you. Um, no, it's not a myth. It's real life and... 
Uh, that is another thing I really don't like. Um, kind of like how I mentioned before, I'm really like sensitive about personal space. I don't like, I'm not claustrophobic, but I just don't like people touching me or feeling like they could touch me any moment. Like that's too close for me. And I find that on a lot of trains, especially during rush hour, which is like in the morning between like 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. and at night between like 5 p.m. and like 7 p.m., the trains will be crowded like that. Literally any train that you ride is going to be crowded like that. And I, mm, I, I avoid those times on purpose for that reason. So it's not a myth. It is real life. It is real life out here. We out here. <laughs> oh, I hope I'm not getting sick. I feel measly. Okay. Oh, do you know Gitsune says I'll be in Japan next year? Yay! And Natalie says I would be interested in hearing that uh, because I'm a little bigger and trying to lose weight before traveling to Japan because I heard a lot of bigger people don't tend, don't, people, mm, sorry, it's fading. A lot of bigger people being treated lesser. Um, I would say it's true but false. People won't outrightly treat you differently. And I think that the fact that you are a gaijin will precede any kind of body size that you are. Um, but if you do want to do the, like, get into fashion or purchase any articles of clothing um you may have a harder time if you are for example like a size i want to say a size 10 or above you like a usa size 10 or above um you might have a bit of hard time um but other than that i wouldn't say that it's too too different like before any kind of appearance that you may have like as far as like your clothing and your style and your hair and and anything, the fact that you're a gaijin will precede you. Like, the fact that you're not a Japanese person will come before any kind of other quality that a foreign, another foreigner, another fellow foreigner would notice about you. Um, I hope that answered your question. If you have any more, feel free to comment. We got another eight minutes. Eight minutes, you guys. So, please get those in. Let's see. Uh, do you know Gitsune says, well, I'll come here before I leave. You're leaving in February? No! Okay, gotta make, gotta make the, um, gotta make the trip. Okay, um, I go on vacation on December 17th, but I will be here. Okay, man, okay, I definitely need to, I'm going back to America for the holidays, but, man, uh, I want to go to Korea. Uh, I want to go to Korea. Is somebody willing to fund my trip? Y'all have my PayPal information now, so y'all want to sponsor a chick, feel free. Um, but yes, I love high, uh, thigh highs too. Oh, wait, hold on. Did I read these already? I did read these. My goodness, who am I? Okay. So, Golden Olive says, do you think that they're... Wait, oh, I literally read this one. I'm so sorry. How many more do I have? Hopefully not too many. Okay, Jeffrey Sherman says, hmm, tight all sign. I'm always impressed by the amount of Americana that is uh, prevalent in other countries. Western acts uh, seem to be very impactful overseas. Oh, yes, we are definitely leading the, the movement. Um, we set a lot of trends and a lot of the trends here, even like Lolita fashion is, is based on like Western culture more than anything. People aren't here walking around in kimonos. Um, and one day I will see like one kimono, like one person wearing a kimono, but most people just wear Western clothes because we have that much influence here. So yes, you are right. Um, so, uh, so chic says, I just found your channel and I'm glad I love your energy. Thank you. Um, Jeffrey Sherman says, me too. She's so chill and easy to listen to. Thank you. Lovely energy. Thank you guys so much. I like to think that my parents were a great influence to me. Um, Shaw2184 says, how long does it take to ship things there generally? Um, it definitely depends on where you are and there are different shipping options. Um, if you're somewhere else in Asia, you can get it within a couple of days. If you're in like the USA or maybe Australia, you can get it within a week. If you're in Europe or some place in like far in Asia, like Russia or like some place in like Western, uh, Western Asia, then you, it might take a little over a week. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be going to the U S and I'll be able to send you guys your, um, your packages from the U S. So if you are in the U S you'll probably have like the cheaper end of the stick. And if you are international, then you'll have to pay more just based on the shipping alone. Um, but here in Japan, yeah, definitely, um, it varies from location, but I feel like that's anywhere, right? Like, you could be anywhere in the world and it'll, it'll cost you some kind of cash, depending on where you are. Okay, do-do-do, do-do-do. 
We got five minutes, you guys. If you're leaving, say bye. Because I love to say bye to you guys. Okay. And Natalie says, It's so cool that you mentioned sister locks, and that's what I have. I'm surprised to find people that do them in Japan when researching. Yes, I'm, I'm telling you. In Tokyo, especially in the big cities like Tokyo, Osaka, Sapporo, Nagoya, like in Fukuoka, there are a lot of black women who live there. And those of you who are going to be in Japan in like the month of November, on November 3rd, there is actually a black woman in Japan convention going on in Kobe, Japan. Yes, Kobe beef, Kobe, Japan. So if you guys are interested, um, no, this is not a paid promotion. I just want to let you guys know because I will not be able to attend, but I definitely would have if I was here. So if you guys are here, then please go. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, I found out her but when I first saw Oh, black hair in Japan. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love, I'm happy that you got something productive out of that. Um, Kitty Bundy says it's late as hell over here, but I'm still watching. Thank you. I know it must be. Where are you located? I wonder. Uh, Crates Creation says, hi, beautiful. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Kitty Bundy says, what's the cost of living in Japan is expensive. Um, I actually touched on that in my city versus country life video. So if you want to go there and check it out, you can definitely see um, a breakdown of prices as far as like rent and like utilities and food goes. Um, Jeffrey Sherman says, oh, well, bear paws. Mine have been called rabbit feet. I have long and very narrow heels. Ah, lucky. You'll definitely, you won't struggle here in Japan at all then. Um, yeah, my feet tend to be very round. So, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll leave it there. Cindy Ozaka says, for the giveaway, would it be bad to read, read out an introduction on paper? Um, I definitely prefer if you could like look into the camera um, and look at me as you're saying it, but whichever way you can send it. Oh yeah, I'm going to let you guys know that currently I have so many geisha giveaway requests, but I have literally zero J intro giveaway entries. So if you're the first one to enter, you're automatically the winner. I'm just going to say that right now. So <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that, but I think that a lot of people want to guarantee their box um, without having to worry about speaking Japanese. So they've entered through the Geisha giveaway, um, the Geisha, the Geisha gift box by Tammy. Um, but if you want to enter in the Jane Shirt giveaway, you've got really good chances right now. So please enter. Um, let's see. Uh, Golden Oliver says, are there any hijabs in Japan? Is there a rapid fire? What? Uh, this was a rapid fire comment. <laughs> um, yes, there are hijabs in Japan. I had, Actually, yesterday, I saw a couple, a man, a woman, and a baby that were in Tachikawa Station. And yeah, the woman was wearing a hijab. And so they're not, they're not, they're kind of rare, I'd say, but they're not, un, uh, they're uncommon, but they're not, mm, they're not, super rare i guess you could say um let's see oh natalie says do you consider yourself an empath is that why you don't like people touching you if if that question makes sense um i don't know i don't know like i definitely um i feel for others um but i also like i'm very sensitive about like my body as well because i i have a very like well maintained internal universe and I don't like being disrupted by, like, mindlessness, such as, like, someone bumping me or something like that. Like, that will just, like, throw me off because I'm having a whole internal conversation. And it's just, like, rude. Excuse you. <laughs> but anyway, that's, I think, more than anything, that's kind of how it is. Um, just because I am I have, like, a very, like, close relationship with myself. And I don't like when people impede on that, like, physically especially. Because most of the time it is just mindful. Like, mind it is mindless in the sense that they don't even realize they're doing it. And I'm just like, excuse me, pardon me. Um, oh, Nia says, you have a blessed rest of your day week and have a good one. Thank you. You too. Uh, Cheryl Freeman says, is it weird to thing to wear crop tops over there? Would probably look at you weird. Mm, I won't lie. Crop tops are not as common. Oh my God. Black women in Japan convention. That's amazing. Yes. BWIJ. Um, please watch this video again. If you have any questions, Ooh, 12.41 a.m. Oh, my goodness. So I guess it's a good time to end this. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. 
If you like this video, please like it. And if you want to see more, then hit subscribe and become part of my YouTube fam. YouTube fam. I have an Instagram, chocolate underscore geisha. And my email is chocolateumai95 at gmail.com. I'll leave a link below. The geisha gift boxes and the J intro giveaway are still open. So please enter and do your best. I am rooting for you. And I hope that you guys have a great day or a great night. And I will see you in the next one. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye-bye.